Hi, this is lesson 3.1, concavity points of inflection and the second derivative test. Let me get you an idea of what this means, this second derivative thing. Here's a headline. UK GDP growth slows down amid Brexit fears. This is 2016, so this is what's happening now. So what's happening is gross domestic product, that's how much a country produces in products and services in a year, the growth slows. So does that mean that the GDP is increasing or the GDP is decreasing? What do you think? Well, if you thought that the GDP is decreasing, you would be wrong. The GDP is still increasing, but the growth is slowing. So graphically, I have this graph up in the corner, the GDP is increasing, but the, the rate which would be the slope of the GDP, if I take these successive slopes, the slope of the GDP is decreasing. So what that means is that the second derivative of the GDP would be negative because this slope might be uh, 1%, this might be a half a percent, this might be 0.2% going up. And so that GDP rate of growth is decreasing. And in this red curve is what we call concave down. Concave down means that it is curved down. And so that's what we want to look at right now in what does the second derivative tell us. So here we go. The graph with the, the shape that we have right here is called concave upward. So I have this curve right here. It's like a smiley face. We're concave upward. If I look at the slopes and what the slopes mean, here is a slope that is negative. Here is a slope that's zero. Here is a slope that, pos that is positive. So as I go from left to right on my curve, those slopes are increasing. And when that happens, we say that the second derivative is positive. It's the rate of change of the rate of change. This one right here is concave down. With concave down, frowny face, the tangent, li the tangent lines lie above the graph, and this slope this slope and this slope are progressively decreasing. And so that means that F double prime is less than zero. Concave down, F double prime is less than zero. Concave up, F double prime is greater than zero. And here's my smiley face. Positive up, negative down. So that's how you can remember some of this. Let's go through some more of this. A point on the graph is a point of inflection if the graph has a tangent line at that point and the graph changes concavity at that point. So what happens here is that this, would, this piece right here is concave down. It's only half of a smiley face. That's okay. That still is concave down. Then at this point right here, I'm going to switch to concave up. And when that happens, we have that point of inflection. So our gross domestic product, oh my gosh, it's tapering off tape. Look, we hit the point of inflection. Now all of a sudden the gross domestic product is increasing. The rate is increasing. And so that's what we're looking at. On the graph, y equals x cubed zero, zero is the point of inflection that we just mentioned. Okay, some examples here. Why don't you pause this and try to answer these yourself the best that you can, and then we'll check what's going on. So number one, concave up. We have concave up here, we have concave up here, and we have concave up here. Some of those are just half a smiley faces, but yes, those are concave up. Please use interval notation to designate each one of these pieces. So now go ahead and do, pause this, do concave downward. So negative one to one, and then we also have this right here, concave down, five to six. Number three, which intervals does the graph have no concavity? I think you can look at that and see. Notice this piece out here. I didn't see that right away, but that piece is there too. Number four, the points of inflection. Now, if we go back up here to this definition, I sometimes don't see this portion being part of the definition of the point of inflection. I always see part two, but I don't always see part one. So ask your teacher which one do you, does your teacher want you to deal with. So what are the points of inflection here? Well, it's where we change concavity. 
So you might say that the basic ones, according to the definition I've given you, would be 1, 1. This point right here, I change from concave down to concave up. And then the other point would be at 5, 1 right here. So I get 5, 1. Those would be the two points. Now, if you ignored the other part, part 1 to this, then you might also say negative 1, 1 would be a point of inflection. And then that would be it. So it's a change in concavity. So ask your teacher which one that they prefer. Now, what we want to find is where do, can we get these inflection points if we give you an equation. So analytically speaking, we find the concavity points, I'm sorry, concavity intervals and points of inflection by using the second derivative number line. So label it as such. Make sure you put F double prime on it for that. And then the procedure is parallel to the procedure that we used for increasing and decreasing in the last lesson. We used the first derivative number line there. We're going to use the second derivative number line here. So if I take this and find f prime, why don't you do that? Find f prime and f double prime. So now the second derivative is 0 is a possible inflection point. And so I set this now, the second derivative, equal to 0. And I can take out, let me take out a 6. So I get 6 times 2x squared plus x minus 1. So factoring and solving, I get 1 half and negative 1. Those are possible inflection points. And so now I want to do a number line to put a relationship between all these together. I, number, or I label this as f double prime. And so I have the two points, negative 1 and 1 half. And what I'm going to do is pick a point on either side of those to see if I'm positive or negative. That will tell me my concavity as well. So if I pick a point on the left side over here, how about negative 2? And I plug it into f prime right here. I'm going to get a positive value. Let's pick a value here. If I plug in 0, if I plug in 0, I get negative 6. And so that's going to be a negative. And this interval, let's plug in 1. If I plug in 1, that's 18 minus 6, so that's going to be positive. And so now I can check my concavity for f double prime. And f double prime here tells me my function f is going to be concave up, it's going to be concave down, and then concave up. Smiley face, frowny face. So I'm concave up from negative infinity to my negative 1 and also 1 half to infinity. Make sure interval notation. Concave down, you can write that. So now where do I change concavity? Do I change concavity? That would be an inflection point. And sure enough, I do right here at negative 1, because f double prime changes from positive to negative, which means my concavity changes. And then also at 1 half, I change from concave down to concave up. And so these inflection points, this one would be negative 1. And if you calculate the y value, you'd get negative 2. And then we also have 1 half. Plug that into your original function, you get 7 16 Now I like to answer y. And this would be because f double prime changes sign. Now for the, when we're doing increasing, decreasing, and we're finding maxes and mins, we had to say which way we did change. For points of inflection, you don't have to say which way you change because the definition is just changing concavity. So we just have to say f double prime changes signs. That's the point of inflection and justification for it. For number six, I'd really like you to pause this. And I have given you f double prime, and so you can go ahead and find out where this curve is concave upward, downward, and then the points of inflection. Please stop this and do that, and then I'll show you the answers. 
So this one brings in some interesting factors. First of all, my domain. X can't be uh, plus or minus 2 because of the denominator here. And then my vertical asymptote happens at x equal to plus or minus 2. And those can't be points of inflection because they're not even defined for my function. They're not a point on the curve. Then I go ahead and set this second derivative equal to 0. Well, what do you notice? Is there a value of x that ever makes this thing 0? And that would be no. So the numerator is never 0. That tells me that I have no points of inflection. No points of inflection? What? Okay, yes. No, we don't have any. However, we do still need to develop the intervals where it's concave up and concave down, so I use the second derivative here. This is not the second derivative test, but we'll show you that in a minute. But this just tells me the intervals where I'm concave up and concave down. So if I plug in negative 3 into my second derivative, then I'm going to end up with a positive value. And you can do that math. Plug in 0, you're going to get a negative value. And then plug in 3, something like that, you can get a positive value for each one of these intervals. So concave up, I'm there. And concave down, I'm there. So now the second derivative, test. The key word here is the test. And when you see that word, that means that I'm testing for relative maxes and relative mins. And so the second derivative test is not necessarily what we just did. We did use the second derivative to set us up, but that's not the second derivative test. And so let's read what we have here. This test does not require a second derivative number line. It does not find points of inflection. It is used to find what I just said, the maxes and mins. So we're going to go ahead and find the critical numbers. And then the second thing is we're going to go ahead and plug numbers into f double prime and analyze the con concavity to see if we are concave up, which means a relative minimum, or concave down, which says that we're a relative maximum. It's kind of backwards of what you think it might be. And here's another note. The second derivative test does not always give an answer when f double prime is equal to 0. Use it only when the directions require it or when given information requires it. So if, let's look at this example number 7. Use this second derivative test to find the relative minimum and the relative maximum points for the graph of this right here. So I need to find my relative, uh, my critical values first, or critical numbers. So f prime of x, find that derivative set it equal to 0 and find those zeros. So my critical numbers are 0 and plus and minus 1. Now we want to test each one of those to see if they are relative maxes or relative min. So we're going to take this and put this into f double prime. So when I do f double prime, this would be negative 36 x squared plus 12. So all I have to do is plug each one of these critical numbers into f prime if it is uh, ends up to be a positive number, then that means I'm concave up. That tells me I have a relative minimum. If it turns out to be a negative number, then I'm going to be a relative maximum because I'm going to be at the top here. So if I plug in 0 into f double prime, I get 12. That's a positive number. That tells me I'm concave up. If that's concave up, then I'm going to be at the bottom of this thing, so I'm a relative min. Positive means a relative min. Positive, remember, smiley face. If I do f double prime of negative 1 and I plug it into here, I'm going to get negative 24. When I do that, then I have a negative, which means I'm concave down. These little pictures really help, help you, I think. So I'd have a relative max. And then if I do f double prime of 1, that's going to give me also negative 24. So then that would be a relative max as well. We'll talk about justifying these in class, but you should justify by the second derivative test. That f double prime is negative, and we get a critical number from f prime, which means that we have a relative max. Now for number eight, I'd really like you to try this one first, so we'll read it together, and then you pause this and try it. g of x is a function such that g prime 
of negative 3 is equal to 0. All these things are equal to 0. If g double prime, and so then they tell us what g double prime is at each one of those respective values. So you should be able to tell if you have a relative max or relative min when possible. So pause and try this. So I put this in a little t-chart, and this tells me what the values of my g double prime are. I really just need to know if they're positive or negative, and these values bring this out. So this is positive 4 here, but I just put a positive. What does that tell us? Well, if g double prime is positive, oh, I was drawing the wrong way, this would mean that we're concave up, and that would be a relative min then. If I'm negative here for negative 1, I'm concave down, so that would be a relative max. And then here, if I have g double prime equaling 0, we're inconclusive. Can't use this test, so we try to use the first derivative test in, instead. Can't use the second derivative test if the g double prime is 0. And then this one here, we are concave up, so then this would be a relative min again. So you can use the second derivative test, find the critical values, plug it into g double prime, and then if g double prime is positive, then we have a relative min. So if I had to justify this, you would write because g prime of negative 3 is equal to 0 and g double prime is positive. That's why we have a relative min. And you also can write in there second derivative test if you want to. That would be the justification. I'm not going to write it for all these other ones, but that's what you'd have to do to justify. All right, I think that's all we got here for this one. You have your gift in front of you. You should be able to do this. Not too difficult to do, I don't think, but sometimes these derivatives get a little fancy. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.